Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. Back in San Diego from traveling all around. I was in uh, uh, Las Vegas at the SHOT Show and then uh, out to Nashville interviewing and uh, talking about the construction out there looking for people to hire so if you're looking for a job and you're watching this uh, before say june or july of 2020 uh, give us a call or send us a resume uh, because we are hiring for nashville all kinds of different positions now so at the shot show lots of fun stuff to see lots of fun stuff to you know people to meet things to do we did a little video on the shot show saw uh, uh, chuck norris out there a ton of fun uh, but uh, at the SHOT Show, the only thing that Glock had that was new and exciting was their 22 caliber handgun, which is known as the Glock 44. And this is it right here. And this video is really about the Glock 44. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I will say, you know, uh, a lot of people were like, uh, 22, why? You know, oh my gosh, why? They're underwhelmed in a sense uh, with the 22 caliber uh, round. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I kind of have the same feelings. However, after thinking about it a little bit and looking into it a little bit and actually touching and feeling this a little bit, um, I've got some new thoughts about it and I'm going to share them with you shortly. But uh, right now, let's go ahead and talk about this gun in particular, what, what I see, uh, what's interesting about it and um, uh, what's unique about it. And then we're going to break it all the way apart and put it back together again and then uh, the next video right after this i'll do a video of shooting this thing through some uh testing with some different types of ammo that i am going to show you that i think is really uh exciting and pertinent to what we're going to talk about with this glock 44. now okay so the first thing you do when you pick up the glock 44 it, it, it's amazing everybody and you know, I, I've, I've really showed it around a little bit i had a show over the weekend and i had people pick it up and they say wow it's really light, and it is really light. In fact, uh, we just uh, weighed it. It is one half, exactly, basically, one half the weight of a standard Glock 19. Now, the reason I say that is because it's basically the same size and shape as a Glock 19. There's a Glock 19. Gun is empty. There we go. So they're the same basic size. This one, the Glock 44, is kind of a Gen 5 version because it has some Gen 5 features. Whereas this is a Gen 4 up here, MOS, with the uh, MOS plate that mounts a uh, red dot optic. So the Gen 4 and Gen 5 G44, 22 caliber, the Glock 19 is the same exact size. However, the thing is it's half the weight. In fact, a lot of people said, well, it sounds or feels like an airsoft gun, and it does, and there's a reason for that. What Glock did was really fascinating, and, you know, they're, they're in the plastic business or the polymer business, is they um, made the slide, most of the slide, out of polymer. If you look in here really close, you'll see there's a difference in tonality, and the rails are actually steel. And the upper part of the slide is polymer or plastic, which is pretty phenomenal because that reduces the weight significantly. And, you know, I'm sure they did that for a lot of engineering reasons to make the uh, slide work with 22 caliber ammo. It's a, you know, rather beefy or bulky slide, keeping in mind that the uh, 22 caliber conversion kits that we sell have an aluminum slide to minimize that weight on the top here. But um, they went with the plastic and it's Pretty cool. Now, there are some reports out there, and I haven't seen them, you know, personally. I haven't seen anything personally with this thing yet, and I haven't really put it through a torture test. I haven't shot a whole bunch through it. Uh, there are some reports that this plastic slide, polymer slide, is breaking, and that there's been some uh, extractors blow out uh, during rapid shooting. And we're going to find that out when I do my test. Uh, when I was at the SHOT Show, and I talked to the Glock personnel, of course, they're salespeople, but when I talked to them, they said, hey, it shoots every kind of ammo, it shoots great. We've shot it, you know, thousands of rounds, everything's great. I talked to the, uh, their, uh, their staff members that were at the booth, and I also talked to some of their competition shooters who've uh, got their hands on this thing and shot it a little bit. And um, they said it works great, works great with all kinds of ammo. So we're going to test that, and we're going to find out. But, you know, uh, I would say to you that whenever you shoot a 22 caliber in a handgun you're going to want to use some high velocity ammo or some you know not you're, you can't really use the cb capture the tiny small short uh, rounds you've got to use the full size 22 lr and do not try to buy the 22 magnums because they're too long they won't fit into the magazine they won't fit into the chamber so it's the 22 long rifle rounds 
Uh, if you say, oh, I want the really hot 22s, well, they do make a Magnum that's longer, and you don't want those. And they're significantly more expensive as well. You want the standard 22 uh, caliber LRs. And we'll talk about the ammo here in a little bit. But uh, let's go through some of these features real quick. So, like, like I said, it's a Gen 5. You'll notice on the frame, it has a small little mag well there. Just flared out a little bit in plastic. Which, you know, obviously, let's see if I can get some light in there properly. And it, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, uh, to uh, load a magazine. So they've got it set up there. I will say they still have a pretty sharp edge. And that's really just a manufacturing thing. Uh, what I would do, what I will do at some point, is just take some uh, thousand grit sandpaper and just run around there and just, you know, get rid of that edge. Because you can literally slice a tomato on that. <laughs> okay, because it is sharp and, you know, it's not pleasant. You, you know, I mean, especially when you're you're handling it around it, it's, it's not something you want to be, especially if you have any speed there, that's when you can actually cut yourself. So I would actually just break that edge, uh, not change the shape, just break the edge uh, on that uh, uh, polymer magwell. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice uh, in this particular gun is they've got a, um, an ambidextrous uh, slide stop, which means it goes on both sides. So typically it's going to be on this side. This one is truly ambidextrous where it's on both sides at the same time. And it's the same as all the Gen 5s. It has one pin like other Gen 5s, another pin back here. One pin above the trigger, which is the trigger pin, and then the trigger housing pin in the back. All right. The other thing that's rather unique on this gun, and, you know, I question why they did it, but uh, they did, is they put adjustable sights on it, which is kind of neat. And, you know, there's your adjustment uh, screw right here. I'm sorry, on the wrong side. There it is. So... One, of course, for elevation, and the other for windage side to side. But, you know, I mean, for a handgun, uh, and this type of handgun, I, I don't think you're going to be shooting much more than 20 yards. Uh, is that necessary? Mm, no. <laughs> In fact, uh, one of the videos I'm going to do shortly after this video is I'm going to install a new set of sights that I found at the SHOT Show, and I'm going to take these off and actually put some night sights on here. So, that said, um, those are the major changes that I would notice. Now, one of the other things, of course, is the, uh, the magazine. And so uh, I was curious to say to myself, well, how much does the magazine weigh? And how much does it weigh compared to a standard Glock 19 magazine? So what they did is they came out with a 10-round 22 caliber magazine, which everybody says, why 10 rounds? Well, because it can be sold everywhere. Now, I bet that the marketing people at Glock will come out with a 15 or 20 round magazine and sell that as an aftermarket product somewhere down the road. So everybody who buys one of these, who's in the free states, not in California or some other states that have a restriction, uh, will buy the higher capacity magazine. This uh, operates just like any other 22 caliber magazine in the fact that it's got a, uh, a pull down. Uh, the, uh, you know, again, I haven't shot this a whole bunch. You, you know, you pull down the um, uh, follower to uh, load uh, because it's kind of hard to push them down. But one of the things I think is a kind of a weak point here, and, and you know, I mean, hey, I'm not Glock, and, and they have a lot of smart people there, so they obviously know what they're doing, but they have a, um, a little piece on the magazine right here. It's a little, little stud that sticks up um, that looks like the round is going to intersect up into it. And it's kind of beveled, and it looks like it's designed to actually force that round up, and I just don't know why they made it out of plastic. Well, I guess I do know why, because they're in a plastic business. But I just think that that's going to be uh, an issue at some point. That is a flaw, or, or it could be a flaw, it could be a defect in, uh, in the course of time. Because if it's not there, it may not feed well. Now, let's go ahead and look inside the barrel. Uh, oh, one more thing. Back to these magazines. Okay, so what's interesting, again, is I loaded a, a standard Glock 19 magazine with 10 rounds of 9mm. I loaded a... G44 magazine with 10 rounds of 22, 40 grain, okay, measured them, and uh, the, the measurements are, this is uh, 0.43 pounds, and this is 0.21 pounds, so basically half the weight again, so the magazine's half the weight, the gun is half the weight of the standard Glock 19, now let me put this out of the way. No, we're not going to mess with that. I'm going to put this loaded magazine out of the way because we're not going to mess with that. We're going to go ahead now. We've got an unloaded magazine. I've got an unloaded G44, and we're going to take it apart. All right, first step is the same procedure. That's one of the nice things about Glock. Everything's basically the same. Interestingly enough, a lot of the parts inside here are not the same, okay? And you're going to see that as we take this apart. But um, if we uh, go ahead and 
do the standard disassembly procedure, which is basically to take the slide back just a little bit. So I, I like to wrap my hand up here. I've seen people do it a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, but you bring it back about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And then you pull down on the slide lock, which is the, um, the little lever that's stuck in the middle of the frame there. And it comes on both sides. You pull down both sides, hold it down, and then walk the slide off and pull the slide off. And there it is. So there's the upper and there's the lower or the slide in the frame. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty easy stuff. Now, we've uh, kind of looked at these pieces already. We know that the magazine button, magazine release button, is ambidextrous. So it'll, it'll flip back and forth and be left or right-handed, depending you know, upon what you are, of course. Uh, but this is one part that is the same for the Glock 19. So you could buy one of our Glock 19 extended magazine buttons and pop it into this gun with no problem. And we've already done that. That's one thing we have tested. The slide lock, also known as the slide release or takedown lever, uh, not the slide release, but the takedown lever, that particular item is different and it doesn't work. They're not interchangeable. Uh, the, um, that's, that's really about it. The, you know, the, the, the magazine spring, the magazine release spring, that little pin down there, that does, in fact, uh, remain the same. That's the same piece. So not much else. The sights are the same, of course. Uh, guide rods, we haven't tested yet. We're about to do that, and I'll let you know of that uh, on another video. So, okay, so now let's go ahead and just do the standard disassembly. So for cleaning, you're going to take the guide rod out, pop it down. Barrel comes out, just like normal, and it comes out. Look how tiny that little thing is. Yeah. Uh, and we have shot this. My son was playing with it the other day, and it's a little, little greasy. But uh, I will say that you have to keep this gun wetter than the 9 millimeters or 40 calibers. Okay, so that's, you know, it needs oil. <laughs> because it, it needs to be uh, lubricated to be able to function properly. If you don't oil it well, it's not going to shoot well. Okay, and then here's the uh, slide itself. Now, uh, this uh, safety plunger is different. The uh, firing pin is different. The slide cover plate is the same, well, thankfully, okay, because I make a whole bunch of slide cover plates. And the sights go on the same, too, the same dovetail, same uh, system for holding the sights in. So let's go ahead and, um, and we'll take this apart real quick, and then we'll go ahead and take this apart. We'll kind of look at each one of these parts and see what's a little bit different about the Glock 44. So the way we take this uh, uh, apart is we're going to start with the slide cover plate. We all know that there is in this uh, gun a firing pin or striker, but it's a firing pin nowadays, they call it. And that's the lug right there. That lug intersects with the uh, trigger bar, the cruciform of the trigger bar, back in the back here. So let me show you that real quick. This little piece right here intersects with that lug. So when you actually pull the trigger, it pulls this firing pin back under spring pressure, pulls it back, and then lets it go. Just, it slides off because it hits the connector and the, the bar slips off and this goes forward and that's what makes it go bang. Now, because I did not depress the um, safety plunger, the firing pin gets stuck. And you'll see the firing pin is not stuck out of the, uh, it doesn't, it gets impeded so it doesn't stick out of the breech face. And right here is the breech face. And you can kind of see the pin back in there, like there. I see that little silver piece right there. That's the breech face. And back in there is the actual firing pin. So let's go ahead and pull that out. The way we do that, of course, like I was going to, is we've got the striker. I'm going to lift the striker up, and underneath the striker is a black piece of plastic. It's very small and a little hard to see, but I think we've got good enough light. If he zooms in here, you're going to see it. Uh, let's see here. And well, it's kind of blending in, but it's right there. So now I'm going to take one of my punches, and I'm going to push down on that little piece right there, right there, okay? So what I'm effectively doing is I'm removing spring pressure from the slide cover plate. So if I push this down and hold it down, then I can thumb this off. If I can, there you go, so there it comes. <laughs> slide cover plate, boom, put that down. Now, inside here are the pieces that make up this upper. So piece number one we'll take out is gonna be the actual striker itself. And it re, you know, has the same type of system, this being a spacer sleeve. And we sell all these pieces and parts. Uh, the striker spring, 
spring cups are white, and the striker. Now, I want you to look at the striker and keep a good uh, picture on it because remember, this is a center, excuse me, a, a rim fire gun, 9mm, 40 caliber, 45 are all center fire. So, hence, the firing pin is offset to be able to hit the rim of the cartridge. And it's offset to, if you think about the orientation, it sits in the gun like so. So it goes like that, oops, and that means it is on the bottom. So it sits in the gun like so. And if we look at this now, I'm gonna bring it down here, I'll put my hand back here so you can actually see the detail. That firing pin is off center, the actual blade itself from the actual piece there. Now what that's designed to do, let's see if I can grab one of these rounds out of here. Here we go. This is the 22 cartridge. And so it sits there like so, and the firing pin sits like this, and it hits the bottom of the rim. Not in the center, but the bottom down here. And that's the orientation you're gonna see. So that's what's going on. So this is really a different part because it's 22 caliber versus a, uh, a rim fire versus a center fire. And so this is not interchangeable. So I'm gonna, this is an assembly too. Now, when you pull it out, you can just leave it like this. Usually does not require a lot of cleaning. I would not oil it heavy. You know, it doesn't need any oil. It's, it needs to be dry inside of that firing pin channel. Okay, that's what that's called. So now the other pieces that we're gonna pull out are gonna be uh, the uh, safety plunger uh, depressor, uh, safety depressor plunger assembly, which is basically a rod, a steel rod, and the spring and the, 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 the plunger itself. Uh, so it goes on, it, it usually wants to live like this. And that's the assembly right there. There's really three parts here, the rod, the spring, and the plastic cap. Now, the metal part always intersects with the other metal part. And the other metal part here is the extractor. Now, this is where everybody has problems with 22 caliber because the rim is so darn tiny that it's hard for that extractor to get a good grip on it. So, two things that always have to happen with 22 caliber. You gotta keep that extractor very clean. It can't have any debris or dust or, or any uh, buildup underneath it because if it does, it's not gonna get the action to clip onto this uh, empty shell and pull it out. So you always have to make sure that you're cleaning that part. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the extractor out here. It will come out once I depress the safety plunger. Safety plunger, extractor. Extractor is the claw. So if you can look in here, you'll see the, well, yeah, you probably won't see much of it right now. So let me go ahead and just drop it out. So the way you drop it out is just push the safety plunger and it'll just fall out. I can do that by my hand here, really. Just like so. So there, now here's what's really interesting about this piece. Okay, it actually looks like it's a tiny, 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 tiny little extraction piece. Let's go ahead and look at it. I'm going to put my finger back here so you can actually see it. Uh, I hope you can see what I'm talking about. It looks like it's stepped right there. See that step? Okay. This little piece, that one high piece up there is what's grabbing hold of the round. So if you get any kind of debris built up in this little area right here, right in here, it's not going to work as well as it should. So I would say that um, that's one of the challenges I have with 22 caliber is that, you know, everything's so darn small that, you know, you're really, and, you know, guns are dirty. So you really have to be careful or meticulous. Now, how do you do that? Basically, you don't even take it out of the gun. Just get yourself a toothbrush and just ch -ch 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 scrub it every, uh, you know, 100, 200 rounds. That's it. Just making sure it's cleaned up. Don't even need a whole lot of lubricant. You could put some, uh, uh, you know, CLP on there or some kind of, you know, gun cleaning uh, fluid, uh, fluid to... Uh, I guess what I would say is dissolve anything, but you know, really just manually scraping stuff out of there with a stiff uh, toothbrush would be a good idea. Now, here's the other part too that we're gonna take apart uh, is this uh, safety plunger and it came out. It includes a spring and there is the safety plunger. And it kind of has a different shape. It goes in one way. Came out, I believe, this way right here. So that would be sitting up here like so. Here is the uh, spring. It goes into the little hole in the top 
and that's the safety plunger and spring. And this, of course, is what prevents the firing pin from moving forward if it were to slip off of the striker lug and you weren't pulling the trigger. So if you drop the gun, this is kind of a drop safety where even if the, the uh, striker comes off or the firing pin comes off of that uh, cruciform, off the trigger bar, it'll hit this and not go forward and not go into the breech face and not make the round go bang, which is a great feature. So uh, it, it does work. You know, I've seen high-speed videos when we've done some testing and, you know, and basically it, it will not allow the striker to go forward based upon the design. That's why you never want to mess with the design of the striker or the front of the striker on any of the Glocks. Okay, you never want to play with any of these dimensions. You don't want to polish them. You don't want to do anything to it. You don't want to mess with this at all as well because this is, you know, proven. It works, and, and that's what you want to do. So, so basically, there's the part there that I'm going to put down. Uh, that's the safety plunger and spring. There's the extractor. Uh, there's the uh, extractor plunger uh, depressor assembly. <laughs> there's, I think, a better name for that, but that's basically what I remember right now. And uh, then there's your, your, basically, your strip slide. Of course, the sights are still on there, and we'll, we'll take these off in a later, later video. But that's it. So uh, now to put it back together, same basic thing. We're going to go in the backward order. So one of the things you want to do is you want to start with your safety plunger, and you want to get it going in first. And let's see if I can orientate this properly. And because that spring is going to fall out, well, yeah, it's going to fall out when you turn it upside down, uh, you're going to need to do exactly as I show you. You're going to need to put it upside down and put it in like so. Or like so, like, oops, there comes that spring. And where'd it go? There it is. Yeah, I hate these little springs. And um, you can see it's kind of a mess. So, all right, I think this is right here, like this. Oops, I think I have it backwards again. There we go. Okay, so I've got it in now. The test that I've got it in properly really only goes in one way, but I do want to test the spring pressure. See the spring pressure? Yeah, it's coming up and down. All right, so it's properly mounted and I've got it properly seated. The spring is not cattywampus. It's, you know, straight up and down. It looks like it's working. So I can kind of look inside the window and also see that too. So if you can see the motion there going, you'll see that I've got it oriented. And you can see how it looks here because, again, the trigger bar is rolling over top of that. Okay, let's see. Do I have it right? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Feels good. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put the extractor in. So to do that, you actually depress the safety plunger with your finger, like I'm doing there, and you put the barrel into the hole so that the, the claw is facing forward or, or in the forward direction. So it's really only one way it goes to. You just drop it in and then let go of the safety plunger and it'll capture itself. So Safety plunger's down, you put this in, let it go, and it captures it so it doesn't come out by itself right now. All right? Pretty simple. This is that uh, rod that we talked about, the depressor plunger rod. And um, again, steel goes to steel. So this steel part is going to intersect with the steel extractor. Now, keep in mind, uh, this has to have some spring pressure because it kind of moves up and down. When it goes forward, it moves over the rim, and it goes all the way in, then it grabs it and pulls it back, and it does it again, and it moves back and forth, back and forth. If you don't have this spring, it won't work. It's just that simple. I mean, that's crazy, huh? Even if you have the wrong plunger, sometimes it won't work because you don't have the right pressure. So let's go ahead and put this back in like so. So I'll turn it upside down. Here comes the plunger with the uh, steel first. Just drop it straight in. And it's going to sit there until I uh, capture it with the slide cover plate. And again, I, wanna, I like to play with the spring and make sure that, okay, I've got it properly placed. I come over here, I can actually see it intersecting the, uh, the extractor right there. Okay. So now, here's my firing pin assembly. Now, one of the things you can do with this firing pin is you can change a spring out uh, from the factory uh, five and a half pounds to like a four and a half pound spring to get a little lighter trigger. I will say to you that the, the trigger on this uh, right out of the gate was not wonderful. It was kind of like, oh, wow, it was kind of hard. So we, um, you know, we played with it a little bit. We put a four and a half pound spring in here and I'm, I'm going to uh, show you. We also put a, a double diamond connector. It's one of the easy trigger jobs you can do uh, just to... Uh, 
get a little better trigger on this without really playing too much, just to put a connector in there for one thing. That, that alone really made it better. So firing pin goes in. Again, it's, it, it can only go in one way. It orientates it here. I have taken this apart in many other videos. Uh, you can certainly go look there. You basically take the spring down, pull the spring cups off, and it comes apart. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of hard to put it back together. So uh, I'm not going to do it today. So there it goes, just like so. So there we are sitting there. And again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play with this real quick and push this and see that that goes, it does protrude. When I push that down, I can actually see it coming out. Okay, so now I'm going to take my slide cover plate and I'm going to orientate it into the slide. And I'm going to push down on the big one first. Okay, so let me get a little larger punch, which would be the, uh, uh, the spacer sleeve. And I'm just going to capture that under the slide cover plate, just like so. Now I'm going to take a smaller punch and I'm going to push down on this detent there and that's a good sound when you hear that click. So that's it. It captures everything and it's all good. Now so to test that, what you're going to want to do is just push down on the safety plunger and push the firing pin forward. You'll see how the firing pin now extrudes out of the breech face. So right there, that's the firing pin. Now I can pull the firing pin back out. Boom. It won't go forward unless the safety plunger is depressed. All right. Now, to reassemble, it has to be in the fired position. So I'm going to leave it forward, okay? Did you hear that? To put it back on the gun, it's got to be in the fired position. So that's really important. So now, easy part is just dropping the barrel in, find that hole, and drop it in, and there you go. And this is, of course, the um, guide rod. And... There you go. So now that's done. Let's go ahead and attack this real quick. Try to make this fast because um, there's some different parts in here that are really unique. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my gunsmith donut. Okay, just a piece of tape. I'm going to put the gun on here. And I'm going to work out the trigger pin first. Okay, a lot of ways to work out the trigger pin, but the only way to really make it work is you've got to take some pressure, some spring pressure off of the pin by manipulating the slide stop. Now when I say manipulate, you're going to see when we take the slide stop off, it's got a hole in it on both sides because it's, a, it's a, ambidextrous, goes on both ways, but that hole intersects with the grooves that are in the pin. So if you don't take that pressure off there, you're really just, it's captured by that groove in the pin and you can pound on it a bunch, it's just not going to come out. Now you may force it out, but the way to do it is to actually jiggle this a little bit. I actually feel that if you push it forward, you lift it up and push it forward and maybe pull it back and forth, you get the best action on it. So a lot of guys will take a punch and just sit on top of it like so and wiggle this thing and just do it. Now sometimes, it actually worked that time, so it was pretty easy. Sometimes I'll take a, a hammer to it, sometimes I don't need to. I do have the cool hammer that uh, allows me to put them back in with the nylon tip. And I like that a lot. That's a, a, a brass tip there. So the nylon tip does not mar the gun at all because it's plastic versus nylon, so nothing happens. So, okay, there's that first pin. Let me go ahead and pull it out by hand. And there it is. Now, there's the grooves I was talking about. If you get in here close, you'll see. So the, uh, you'll notice how big they are because uh, you'll see that slide stop is kind of thick. So those grooves actually kind of capture that. So what I'm doing is I'm picking that slide stop up and pushing it forward and back, trying to get it off those grooves. And then the, once you get it off the grooves, the pin comes right out. And hence, if it wasn't captured in the grooves while you're shooting, the vibration would make the pin vibrate out. That's why it works like it does. Next pin is going to be this uh, trigger housing pin. I'm going to take a little, little smaller punch. And this one I can actually just push out or I can take a hammer to. Uh, I'll just push it out. And it comes out pretty fast. And there's your pin. So now I've captured them in here. They're not going to roll off on the table. It's really important. All right, so I'm going to just push that off the side here. And now I've got both pins out. And I've got to lift out the uh, locking block. Now, you're going to notice something here, which is really peculiar to me. But, again, Glock's in the plastic business. And they made a plastic locking block. Imagine that. And now, uh, keep in mind, the world starts and ends on that, block, that, that locking block. For these handguns, that locking block is the heart. So I'm going to take it out. And they made it out of plastic. There it is. And you see how it went in? Just kind of like that. You see how it's, it's kind of angled forward where the where the rounds go. All right. So that's it. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Now, got the locking block out of the way. I can take the slide stop. Remember we talked about the slide stop. 
And if you look here, you're going to see there's the holes we were talking about. Here's that pin. Here's that pin rested in here like so. And it, and it marries up and there's spring pressure that pushes this down onto that groove. Your objective is to lift it up a little bit and to wiggle it back and forth so it comes out. That's what we're trying to do. And I hope I demonstrated there. Uh, I'm sure that at some point uh, they will come out with a, uh, an extended uh, slide stop lever, which I think is always a great addition. Uh, but uh, that's it. It's, it's ambidextrous, at least, and people really like that, especially those lefties out there. Okay, next thing coming out is going to be the whole trigger housing and trigger assembly. Okay, it's all one piece. So we're going to grab the, ex the ejector right here, and we're going to pick this up, and out it comes. There you go. So that's the trigger. And you'll see that I have already, uh, my son was playing with this, and he dropped a, a three and a half pound connector in there. That's our double diamond three and a half pound connector. Because it worked so good and it made the trigger so much better, and he just didn't like the factory trigger. So he dropped that in there, and it was, it's much crisper and ni nicer and cleaner and all, all, all kinds of great stuff. So you, you should probably do the same at some point. It's a cheap item. It's inexpensive, should I say. All right, that's it. Now, let's go ahead and take this apart. Now, this is the same as a Gen 5. So it, it's not really attached, it's captured with a stirrup. And if we look in here, you're going to see the stirrup. Let me orientate this properly and hold it down. And you see the stirrup right there, this uh, guy right here. The trigger bar goes into that. So if you understand that, you'll be able to put it back together easy. So the way to take it apart is to grab it, pull it forward, and then twist it out. And out it comes. And that's the trigger bar and trigger shoe and trigger safety. Sold as one piece. Okay, so they don't sell all this separately. It's all just one piece. Voila. And then here's the connector. And inside is your, uh, well, they call it the trigger spring. And you can kind of see the spring in there if you can look in there. And there you go, right there. Oops, there's a spring. And that's the uh, little stirrup there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the cruciform, the front of the cruciform, which is the trigger bar, into that stirrup, capture it, and push it forward. See, that's spring-loaded as well. All right, so that's the trigger housing, and that's the connector. Connector comes out uh, very simply. You can take a punch and punch it out on the back side. Push it out on the back side. Well, very simply. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. Maybe you need a little bit more muscle than that. Okay, here we go. Uh, yes, it's stuck in there. So, okay, that's good. So let me go ahead and show you how I, I would approach it an, another way. I will grab a little flathead screwdriver, which I know I have around here somewhere. There we go. And something really flat and skinny. How about that? And I'm just going to get underneath here and just pry it up from the, from the base so I don't bend it. I'm just prying it up just a little bit at a time. And I should be able to make this work. Here we go. I actually have one all preloaded here. Here we go. This will work better. There we go. All right, here it comes. It's coming out. I right, trust me, it's coming. All right, and this is the connector. And it's just a press fit into this trigger housing. And it's really press fitted. So that's our three and a half pound connector. And we sell a ton of these. You should have one for all your Glocks. This is one part that actually is almost universal for all the Glocks, except for the Glock 42 and 43. It has its own smaller connector. This item, uh, you know, I've been selling these for, what, 12, 15 years now. It's a no-brainer. It just makes it a crisper, lighter, shorter trigger pull. It's going to improve your accuracy and just make the gun feel better uh, overall. So you basically take the old one out, put in the new one like so. And you basically just press fit it in. So sometimes it's a little bit hard, but you want it to be hard. You don't want to bend it. You want to really try to go from the bottom there. And there we go. I got it started. And now you'll notice. So a lot of people say, well, gee, it looks like it's bent. See how it sticks out from the trigger frame? Let me put my hand back there so you can kind of see. See how it sticks out? What's well, supposed to. When, it, when it's all the way captured in there, it's supposed to stick out about two degrees. And the reason it sticks out is because you want that spring pressure. That's what resets the gun. So it's, it's in and out. When you put it into the uh, frame, it gets compressed a little bit, but it still sticks out a little bit. And when the, when the trigger bar runs over it, it pushes it in, and then it goes bang, and it comes back out. In and out. Just that fast. So this is a hardened steel uh, piece that uh, 
uh, you know, is, is spring steel. So it's designed to have that pressure. So a lot of people say, well, gee, I want to bend it back in shape. Well, don't do that <laughs> because it won't work. It has to have that spring pressure. It has to have that uh, slight can out. Now, the hard part may be to put this trigger bar back in, but let me show you how we like to do that. That's the front of the cruciform. This whole thing is called the cruciform. That's the rear that intersects with the, um, uh, the striker lug. Notice how it, it's kind of tilted. This piece is tilted down. You'll see that the front has a nose down. There you go, that's better. And the, the back has a little tail up. And that's by design, so don't straighten those out either. It's not bent uh, accidentally. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the front of the nose of this thing and we're gonna capture it into the stirrup and push it forward and twist the bar in so it rests like so. Voila. Love that. Okay, now it, it will want to pop out by itself, like, you know, just like pop out a little bit and it's not going to be perfect. It's going to want to do something like that. When you put it into the gun, it's going to capture itself and center itself up and it's not going to, uh, it's not going to be, uh, well, there, it looks pretty good there, but it's going to actually center itself up and be more straight. Okay. So we got the frame completely disassembled. I mean, we could take the magazine button out, and that's I've done a million videos on that as well. You come in here inside. Let me show you inside. Same basic uh, concept. See that spring? That spring is called the uh, uh, magazine release spring. It's a, uh, a roll pin that fits into the V down there. Just a press fit again. So the way to get that out is to take a screwdriver and go in there and scoop that out. And basically, I have a... a a, um, a Gen 4 uh, magwell here, or mag uh, release here. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and scoop that pin out of this little notch right here. So let's see if we get in close and see, show you the notch. Uh, right there it is, and uh, I'll turn it upside down, how's that? There we go. Uh, let me go right here. Hmm. There we go, a little bit more light on that. So, if you see the notch, right there. There you go. That's good. You see the notch right there. The pin rests in that notch and it goes back into that little slot. You want to scoop it over to the notch and scoop the pin on top of this thing. You can pull the pin out with a pair of needle nose pliers and this will come out and then you can change into a new one. And again, I've got videos uh, for the aluminum uh, extended mag uh, releases that we make to show you the same process. It's the same process with all Gen 4, Gen 5 Glocks uh, for this particular animal. So, all right. So then we're going to go ahead now and reassemble this thing. All right. So I've got my pins over there. I've got my locking block. I've got my trigger. So the first thing we're going to do is put a trigger in. Trigger housing goes in. And it kind of will find itself. And get the trigger down there. And there's a nice little sound, a little click. It clicks into place. All right. So it's in. Locking block is next. I think that's right. Yeah, let's see. No, I guess I've got to put this uh, slide stop in first. Slide stop goes in, and then the locking block goes over top of it. I hope that's right. It could be backwards, but no, it's right. So that's it. Pretty simple. And that's what's cool about a Glock. It's so simple. You can understand it. I can understand it. And you can change out the parts yourself without going to a gunsmith. You don't need to have an engineering degree to, to figure it out. If you want to modify anything, you, you can kind of get a feel for how it works, and you can do that. If something were to break in the field, you can go ahead and fix it. A couple tricks on putting your pins in. Uh, let's put the trigger housing and pin in first. Typically now, in a quote-unquote gunsmithing world, people like to take the pins out from the left to the right, and we put them back in from the right to the left. I don't know if that really pertains anymore. I know it's pretty old school, but... Uh, I've been around for a long time. That's how everybody told me to do it way back, way back. And here's where this little hammer comes into play. See how I can get in here and I can actually tap that thing in. Now, because of the design, I really can't get it perfect. So what I'll do is I'll just take my, my punch and I'll just true it up with my hand. And just like that. And I can look on the other side and it looks like it's perfect on both sides. Yeah. So that's the trigger housing pin. Now here is uh, the trigger pin. And the only thing you have to be aware here is that um, the trigger itself it has a little bit of spring pressure and it's kind of moving a little bit. Just got to make sure your holes are lined up. So sometimes you'll need to push this trigger up or down or back or forward just to make sure 
that all the holes are lined up. And if they're not perfect in there, you can take your punch in there and say, hey, what's going on there? And then put a punch in there and kind of straighten everything out and try to figure out where that home uh, button is or the home side is. And then, again, holding down the, what they call the bird's eye of the trigger bar, I've got it kind of in the place. I can see the hole square through, take my punch uh, and my, uh, my hammer and uh, my pin and just tap it in, just like that. That's it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just true it up. And sometimes you'll hear it click into place, sometimes you won't. I heard it click, I hope you did too. What that was, was the spring on the slide stop. Once, it, once the pin got over there with those, uh, those notches lined up, it clicked up into place. So that's why when you take it apart, you've gotta unclick it in a sense. That's really important. You can pound on that thing for a long time and bend that piece in there. All you have to do is take a little pressure off there and jiggle that around, that being the slide stop. Okay, there's our lower, completely assembled now. Here's our upper, which we did moments ago. And now we will put it back on, rack the slide, pull the trigger, resets good, feels good. Now it's done, it's really that easy. So one of the other things I wanna show you, is our $35 holster or any Glock 19 holster, as a matter of fact, will work with this gun. And that's a nice feature. So if you have a Glock 19 and you're thinking about getting the 22, well, you can use all your Glock 19 holsters. So here is a Glock 19 inside the waistband holster for a lefty. Okay. And look at that. Beautiful. All right. Comes out when you want it, but doesn't go when you need, uh, when you don't want it to. So uh, this is, uh, like I said, our $35 holster. We sell tons of them because they're $35 <laughs> and they're super lightweight and they work and it's basically indestructible kydex. Nothing fancy. It just is a nice holster. The thing's inside your waistband. Why do you, you know, it's inside your pants. Why do you need it to be fancy? All right, so there it is. Uh, I love that holster. Uh, this Glock 44 is kind of cool. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about it real quickly from a different perspective. Now, of course, everybody's kind of like, ah, oh, 22 round, what good is it? Uh, you know, it's plinking. Well, there's a couple things you can really think about with, it, with this particular gun. Because it's the same shape, size as a Glock 19, and basically a Glock 17 as well, with just a little bit shorter here. It's a great gun to train with, draw with, and practice with, because you can transition the same skills, feeling, presentation, holstering, everything with the real 19 or 17, with a real gun. <laughs> um, the 22 is a real gun, okay, I'm just joking. But um, so the fact is a lot of people, want to shoot a 22 because it has less recoil or like no recoil. I shot it, it's like, wow, that's it? Bop, 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 bop. Okay, wow, it doesn't go anywhere. There's an advantage to that. If you're training someone to shoot, you basically can get them started on 22, same grip size, same everything, proper grip, proper stance, make sure they really understand how to hold on to the gun because if they get lazy here with a 22, they'll be lazy with a nine or a 40 and it'll jump, over, jump on them and they won't be happy about that. So you have to impress upon them the fact is that, yeah, this is a training gun, the same shape and size, but let's refine your skills with this. Now, there's another thing that's really fascinating about this gun. Uh, the ammo. Ammo nowadays, okay, is uh, pretty darn impressive in the sense that it, um, uh, there's some 22, 22 long rifle that are hollow points. And uh, I've got them here to show you. And they're pretty darn amazing uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, you know, you can buy a box of this for like five bucks. I think it's what it is. You know, seven bucks. How's that? Seven, eight dollars. Okay. That means you have 50 rounds for half the price of, say, nine millimeter. And this is factory. Okay. It's not reload. You don't, typically, people don't reload uh, 22s. All right. So these are factory box ammo. Now, there's another thing I like about 22 is that I can put 50 rounds in my pocket and not even worry about it. Whereas a, a box of nine or 40 is, you know, significantly heavier and larger. The other thing about this new ammo, which we are now going to go ahead and offer on our website, because I'm so impressed with it, is that the velocity is what makes it a good self-defense round. Now, I know people are going to say, 22 self-defense? Oh, you're crazy. Well, okay. First of all, super light gun, right? Half the weight of a 19, hands down. 22 caliber ammo that is hollow point and travels 1,640 feet per second. Now, that, think about that. Thing. You know, okay, 1,600 
and 40 feet per second. A 223 a rifle is 2700 to 2900. So this is oh not half but you know but probably 60 or 70% of that same projectile it's really the speed the velocity that makes it that much more deadly or that much more effective but at self defense ranges with concealed carry in mind and the fact that you can carry this on your person and kind of forget about it because loaded i mean the thing with 10 rounds is less than a pound just basically a pound so with the holster and the full magazine it's about a pound that said it's a it's it's a pretty good stand up self defense handgun for my thoughts because one if you've got a heavy gun and you've got a, a Glock 19 that weighs twice as much and then you know all of a sudden it's two pounds and you're carrying that with another uh, holster and the whole thing all of a sudden it gets to be a little uncomfortable uh, you know we all know it anybody who's carried a gun all day long knows that hey after a while it's like yeah geez what a pain in the ass hence that's why they came out with the Glock 43 and the 43X are smaller or slimmer they're better to carry we got that but if you really thought about you know, okay well hey I like the size of this. I like the way it feels. I like the way it grips. I, it's the same as my 19. That's where all of a sudden it starts to make a little bit of sense because this new ammo has uh, some ballistic uh, potential to it that is definitely uh, effective. Now, there's one in particular I want to bring to your attention. It's called the segmented HP. Now, this one is only 32 grains. It goes 1,640 feet per second, but... It has a segmented bullet. Now, if you look at this uh, real quick, it means it's going to split up on you uh, as it hits your, uh, your target, which, uh, you know, I would say would be self-defense. Uh, you know, that's a self-defense round. Uh, of course, you know, you always want to have a bigger gun. If you know there's going to be a danger, you know, people are going to debate me and they're going to go crazy with me. Oh, you got to carry a 45. Well, yeah, I got it. You know, hell, if, you, if you're going out and you know something's wrong, take a rifle with you. <laughs> you know, I mean, at that point, don't go. You know, I mean, you, you know, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, uh, the idea behind concealed carry is that you have a gun. And if the gun is comfortable to carry and you can bury it on your body and you don't have to think about it, you have got it. Now, would I rather have a 9mm versus a 22? Yes. Would I rather carry a pound versus two pound? Yes. So, you know, the guy, there's kind of the answer. You know, it's kind of that, hey, it's better to have a gun than no gun. And when they come out with a long, the higher capacity magazine, the 15 or 20 rounder, hey, all of a sudden it's a whole nother ball game. Because, you know, 10, 15 shots of this stuff is pretty effective. So there's my take on this new 44. I like it. It's cool. I haven't shot it a whole bunch. I'm going to go, uh, the next video I'm going to do very shortly because uh, I'm in San Diego today. Uh, I'm going to Nashville, Tennessee tomorrow. Uh, we've got a farm out there that we're going to shoot on. It'll be the first video I'll shoot at the farm, so I want you to watch that. You look for that. I'm actually going to shoot this. Okay, we're going to take this out and we're actually going to, you know, shoot some of this ammo and shoot through different things and see what kind of uh, uh, velocities we get or, or should I say uh, stopping power, quote unquote, which you really can't tell. But how, what's penetration? Is it going through, you know, uh, wood or is it going to go through, uh, you know, a phone book or how, how far is it going? And try to, you know, compare that to a 9 millimeter too. So if the 22 does this, remember 9 millimeter goes about 1,200 feet a second. This is another 25, 30% more at 1,640 or 1,700 feet per second. So that said, uh, we're going to go and test this thing out and see, you know, see what it's really like. But I think, uh, you know, for someone who wants to shoot but doesn't want to shoot 9 millimeter because they're kind of afraid of it, quote unquote, you know, anybody who is new to shooting and just wants to learn, anybody who's training people, because it's the same grip angle, because it's the same size, it's a great gun to start with. It is the Glock 44. I am Lenny McGill. This, of course, is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. We sold a couple hundred of these already. We're going to sell a couple hundred more. People love it. They do like it. I think there's some good feedback already. There has been some negative stuff out there with, with this slide cracking. I'm anxious to see why and how that happened. Did they drive a truck over or did they hit it with a hammer? Because it is plastic. So at the end of the day, that's something to you know, definitely consider. But um, I want to say thank you for watching. And uh, do tune in because uh, you were slowly but surely getting Nashville done. I'm going to do the first video in Nashville on this Glock 44 out at the, uh, the range in, at the farm so we can actually uh, uh, test this thing. And, and it's a beautiful place, uh, lots of trees, lots of water. So uh, I definitely hope you can join us. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Lenny McGill again here at the Glock store. We'll see you next time.